Hi, my friend. You ready? Yeah. Andrew's going to share his rendition of Whitney Houston. Uh-huh. Here we go. Take it away. Just kidding. <laughs> that's not what I'm going to do. I mean, I could have first say Elvis, but that's a different topic. Uh, let's, see. let's see. So, a while ago, well, not a while ago, actually a really long time ago, when I was like 12 or 13, a lot of people, a lot of people, and this was um, slightly past the early 2000s, they were downloading screensavers to their laptop to talk to aliens. Like they were downloading screensavers on their computers to talk to aliens. And this was not any Stranger Things type scenario where people were looking at a static screen. This was actually a program called SETI at Home that down, where people would have these screen savers loaded when their computer is not in use and they would process radio telegraph data. And they would be able to basically have one computer, your friend has another computer, and then there's millions of computers processing the same type of data. And that made me very curious in data, which is like, okay, cool, a teenage boy curious with data, what is that gonna bring up? But I was very curious in trying to compress data, particularly, and trying to process data that is probably more unique for the average person. And around the same time, there was a company called Project Loon, and there was also United Launch Alliance, a lot of people tried this in the past, but they had this idea of beaming internet directly from a balloon to a gateway on, on, on the ground. So it's like a really cool idea. And they over-engineered the balloon. That's, um, that's, that's one thing, you don't over-engineer a balloon. And number two is they also weren't able to figure out a way to ping the data fast enough in real time for it to be cost effective. So back to what I do. I do, I was very interested in data compression. And we looked at the ways that people were analyzing data, and we figured out they're wasting a lot of computational processes, which is nerd, nerd talk for basically, we can do it better. And we found out that we could compress network packets. And one of the main reasons we wanted to compress network packets is because we wanted to offer what Project Loon did and what other companies tried doing before, but for average rural communities. Something I noticed is there's a very big digital literacy divide. In fact, um, digital literacy affects people in the fact that if you don't have access to connectivity, you, your GPA could drop by over an entire point. Um, it could affect your ability to, ability to apply to jobs. Um, in third world countries, books like the Bible or different political views are censored because of the internet. And at the same time, digital connectivity in places like Southeast Asia and Africa basically divides people across the world in terms of who's connected to the next digital ecosystem and who's not. And we wanted to create a method where we're able to compress network packets so everyone could have access to connectivity. So I set out this dispenser. It's called Raymond Computing, also known as Darkcom Global. And we decided we want to launch here in Michigan. And we tried launching um, one of our first balloon launches up in Harbor Beach to actually test this. And lo and behold, if you launch in a, an internet balloon in the sky, make sure there's not a couple that's having uh, engagement photography the same day. So we launched, and there was a couple doing their engagement photos. and. Um, an internet balloon almost hit them, not really, but we're like, hey guys, get away from the coastal line, and lo and behold, now they, there's some couple out there with an internet balloon in their wedding photos. But today, we're trying to compress data, and we believe that this could really affect the digital divide, and we don't just wanna stop at the internet, we wanna do raw data in general, and we believe that the future of AI, the future of computing, has to do with who can compress the most data. And we could save lives, we could connect the unconnected, and that's my story. Okay, the rural community, yes.